would be cast to the ground. Instead of looking to Jesus as our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary, the people were taught to look to human priests in a counterfeit sanctuary upon the earth. So what you have is during the Dark Ages, you have this power rising upon a scene that actually attacked every article of furniture and the truth they represented. The altar of sacrifice, representing the sacrifice of Christ, was attacked, altered in a sense, uh, and a new teaching came upon the scene that said the sacrifice of Christ was not sufficient for the forgiveness of sins. If you wanted to be forgiven, you had to pay money. You had to uh, perform indulgences. You had to you know, do penance. And so the sacrifice of Christ was not sufficient for the forgiveness of sins. And the one-time sacrifice of Christ is now being repeated perpetually at every Mass. And so the cross, in effect, has lost its power. The laver, uh, which represented baptism, that too was altered. We must repent and be baptized, which means you must be of age to understand that you have sinned and repent on, on free will. And so this teaching was replaced by infant sprinkling. And then when you look at the, um, the table of showbread, that represents the Bible. The Bible was, during the Dark Ages was taken away. It is forbidden for laymen to read the Old and New Testaments. We forbid them most severely to have the above books in the popular vernacular. The lords of the district shall carefully seek out the heretics in dwellings, hovels, and forests, and even their underground retreats shall be entirely wiped out. Pope Gregory IX and the Council of Telusinum, 1229 AD, Canons 14 and 2. And so when you take away the Word of God, you take away the truth of God, and you have people that are now bound to superstition, um, and bound to tradition over the Word of God. The people were told that you couldn't read the Bible for yourself. Instead of the bread of life and we partaking of that in terms of the scripture, somebody else now has to interpret it for us. And uh, sort of the truth and the importance of the Bible being the foundation, that was lost sight of. The altar of incense, which represented Christ's intercession on our behalf, was cast down. And in this place was set up you know, what was called the confessional booth, a two compartment room divided by a curtain with a man sitting in the place of God, hearing the confessions of other men. And uh, so the people were told, you can't have direct access to God. You must come to priests and confess your sins to them. The priest came and he placed himself in between the sinner and the Lord and said, no, you must go through me. You need to confess your sins to me. And again, barriers being put up between man and God. And just the individual's ability to go directly to God was lost. The seven branch candlestick represented the church. Uh, this too was attacked in the persecutions that happened uh, during this time period known as the Dark Ages. The witnessing was was trying to be stamped out. And that's what you find the, the candlesticks is all about, witness. Anyone who differed with the teaching of this dominant church or this dominant system was persecuted, burned at the stake, you know, tortured in, in many different ways in order for them to fall in line with the system. And so in so many different ways, you see the sanctuary being, being cast down. Then you get up into the most holy place where is the Ark of the Covenant. That's where you find the Ten Commandments inside the Ark. The Bible says this power would think to change times and laws, Daniel 7.25. And the Reformation clearly showed or preached with power that they saw the papal power who said that it had the right to change God's law as representing this power. 
The Bible says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. The prophecy foretold the Catholic Church would think to change times and laws, and the Church acknowledges this fact. The Pope has the power to change times, to abrogate laws, and to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. And as you look at the Roman Catholic uh, Church theology, you'll find that the second commandment basically in the catechisms is eradicated. It doesn't appear. They deleted one commandment, which was dealing with the imagery. You can't have an image. And so now they have a problem. They have nine, only nine commandments. So they took the 10th commandment and they divided it in half. In addition to the sanctuary being cast down in terms of many of the doctrines and the law, we also lost the idea of the Sabbath. They took the seventh day Sabbath, which uh, pointed to uh, Saturday and said by the power and authority of the church, uh, we have changed that day to Sunday, the first day of the week. Re-emphasizing the change of this commandment, a Catholic priest said this in 1903. It is well to remind the Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, and all other Christians that the Bible does not support them anywhere in their observance of Sunday. Sunday is an institution of the Roman Catholic Church, and those who observe the day observe a commandment of the Catholic Church. Mankind who used to understand the keeping of Sabbath was part of the Christian life in the early church was now being told that, no, the first day of the week is the new Sabbath set up by the Roman church because she says she has the power to do so. The safe way is always the way of scripture. If God said so, and I let myself be convinced by someone that God did not say so, then who's to blame? I'm to blame. Now, the idea that God's Sabbath, for instance, has changed is ludicrous. When you think about the only commandment that begins with the word remember is the one they want us to forget. And so those are the unchangeable precepts of truth. And uh, he put that in the Ark of the Covenant. That was lost during the Dark Ages. Through the centuries, the sanctuary and the truths it represents were cast to the ground. In other words, they were made void 